Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Freshly Pressed. Today we have with us Wells Thompson. Hi. Welcome to the show, Wells. Happy to be on. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, in your own words, can you can you introduce yourself and uh, and you know tell us how you got into comics in the first place? Sure thing. Yeah, my name is Wells Thompson. I'm a writer. Uh, mostly of comic books, but also uh, I have a novel uh, that will be debuting in some form later this year. Uh, I am originally from uh, Little Rock, Arkansas in the United States uh, and currently live in Chicago. Uh, I rescue cats and uh, just trying to live uh, my uh, house husband fantasy uh, for as long as I can at this point. Um, yeah, no, I, I originally got into comics uh, sometime after college uh, I was originally uh, working as uh, a write, like a screenplay writer, um, doing uh, student films and stuff like that, uh, and that was g going pretty well. But uh, lack of funding and lack of relevant of, of connections sort of drove me to to try something else. Uh, my writing partner on this project is uh, Dalton Shannon. He's the one who actually got me into comics. Uh, comics have been his sort of like personal thing he's always wanted to do since he was a little kid. Um, and he sort of showed me uh, some of the cool stuff you could accomplish uh, using the medium. And I, I've ever since then, that was uh, about five, six years ago. And ever since I've just mm. completely dove in and, and made it uh, sort of my, my whole thing. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. You have a lot of, uh, I, I, saw, I saw, just saw your Kickstarter profile mm -hmm. as well and you have you have a lot of uh, comic books already like uh, created so uh, tell us a bit about your work as well you know like your your comics and uh, how like what's what are the things that you usually love writing about uh, I love writing about uh, people people having to make hard decisions is like the the sort of uh, crux of it but uh, I, I don't typically stick to one genre. Uh, the, the book uh, that I'm here to talk about, the Mechaton, is all ages. It's sci-fi, comedy, action, sort of, uh, you know, Saturday morning cartoon feel. Uh, but I also do quite a bit of horror, minting with, like, fantasy and romance lately. Um, and I love, you know, uh, sort of light magical realism. Uh, so, yeah, to me, it's, it's more about the character-driven stuff. I, I like talking about um small groups of people really being put through the ringer as it were <laughs> uh <laughs> uh in in however many forms i can get that i i often joke that if i you know i don't care what genre it is uh, if i can find a way uh yeah, that's pretty yeah. much the only through line <laughs> that's so awesome i funny you said uh saturday morning cartoons i think and also because Mechaton has a uh, has a glove, uh, a mechanical mm -hmm. glove, it like uh, reminded me of obviously Voltron uh, mm -hmm. when I was reading uh, reading it, uh, and also I think Voltron because of the dynamics between the characters and there's obviously mm -hmm. a, a, a mech involved and you know things like that, uh, and also like the cocky humor and you know things like that. Um, yeah, this... we. I, I've I've gotten so many since we started doing this. I've gotten so many. This reminds me of Megas XLR, of Ben Ten, of uh, like, and the the common through line is just yeah, those like uh, shows that used to come on in Toonami uh, in in the two thousands, which is yeah. you know absolutely was my bread and butter, and, and that's that is it is sort of a love letter to that and that kind of uh, 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 time in media. Um, yeah, that was always the stuff that that drove me, and I wanted to. Uh, create something that felt 
that still felt like that while being really mature and 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 uh and sort of having a really uh strong story that you could grab onto and still being funny and and you know quirky and and <laughs> silly at times yeah absolutely i i think for for like someone who's preteen i think this is like this is ideal because uh mm. I... obviously Sorry. get Busy. messages all the time from parents asking me when the next one is coming out and it, it, it feels amazing <laughs> that's um, so good <laughs> it's like my kid won't stop bothering me when does the next one come out and i'm like when it does i'm sorry <laughs> we're doing our best um and that and uh and and i have some friends that are uh like middle school teachers that brought it to their classroom and their kids fell in love with it. And so they're always asking me when the next one comes out as well. Um, so yeah, kids, kids absolutely love Mechaton, but we didn't write it specifically for kids, if that makes sense. We wanted it to kind of appeal to the kid and everyone uh, and, and not talk down to the audience. Uh, you know, I, I think that is part of the reason why kids like it is because it's, you know, talking to them like they're adults, even though it is. Silly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, like I, I think that's that's how most of the great kids shows mm -hmm. and kids books and you know all the all the materials are like one of some of the best things are written uh, that way because kids mm -hmm. don't love being talked down to. So, no, and know, they know they, the yeah. difference. They know when someone's patronizing them and when someone thinks they're like too stupid to understand something. It's like <laughs> no, kids go through a lot. You just have to kind of meet them at their level. Yeah, exactly. And also, I think the, there's a certain energy to the book that makes it, it's fast paced. It's also like, it's very snappy. The, the mm -hmm. dialogues fly very quickly. And you know, like that, that sort of, uh, especially between the two lead characters, uh, it's, it's such a beautiful, um, what, what would I say? Like chemistry between the two. Yeah. Uh, so what that the... makes it very special. <laughs> One of my least favorite things to go into a show or a, or a movie is uh, the sort of exposition shorthand. Like when you have two characters that are siblings and they ref they never talk to each other like their brother and sister or like their brothers. Uh, they usually will, especially if the relationship is strained for some reason, they'll be like, hello, brother. Like just point it out <laughs> in a really obvious way that, uh, to me, comes across as really inauthentic. Uh, being the youngest of, of uh, three boys, uh, I'm much more likely to, you know, walk in and be like, "Hey, idiot!" Um, there's sort of a, a you know, casual uh, uh, harshness to the rapport, but it yeah. it comes from a place of love. So you can tell it's not like they they legitimately think they're stupid or are they're you know, ribbing on each other because they're annoyed. It's, it's, you know, they've grown up together and they, they understand each other. Um, and I feel like even if we took out any reference to like them being siblings, it would be really easy to tell that that's what they are, which is one of the things I'm most proud of about this book. Yeah. Is, is the chemistry between those two. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it comes off really well as well. Um, it, it feels very organic, very natural. Uh, at at no point did I feel like it was anything was out of place. To be honest, like mm -hmm. no five issues is so well, very well done. Um, also, the color palette needs a special mention because uh, oh my god, the, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the Casey uh, absolutely kills it with the colors. Yeah, it's they're yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, uh, the artwork and the colors are just stunning mm -hmm. this this book is so beautifully put, put together like it's 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 really well done absolutely yeah fernando yeah. Pinto is uh the the artist on the book he's a chilean art professor and uh yeah everything he makes is just just exudes energy it's so much fun um all the details that he puts into the the robots and the the uh, monsters and just the everyday things in the background uh, are so much fun to to pick apart and it, I, it's never a bad day when when i get an email that's like hey these pages are ready uh it's always it always makes me feel just at, like i have the best job in the world same day i might feel like i have the worst job that oh. moment it's great <laughs> yeah <laughs> very true so uh how how did you come up with the with the idea of the book what, what was the genesis of it 
Uh, it was that thing where a bunch of kids are together uh, talking, you know, uh, at 3 a.m. Uh, on a sugar high, talking about, like, ha having watched a bunch of anime and just being like, wouldn't it be cool if this happened? And, you know, someone threw out uh, Logan Graham, uh, our friend, that was like, what if uh, a glove, like, turned anything it punched into a mech? And we were like, that sounds sick. And then, you know, the next morning we were like, yeah, that sounds really cool. And then the next week we were like, that sounds really cool. And it just kept it like it, it was the idea that stuck around. Uh, and uh, we, yeah, D Dalton eventually was the first one to actually write the, the, the concept and, and sort of get the idea going. Um, and the first draft that he wrote, a lot of that is still present in the first issue of Mechaton. Um, and then it kind of evolved into our project. Uh, Logan, it, Logan, uh, it got busy with life and and doesn't really write anymore, which is tragic. But he is a part of the the book. He's the uh, waifu guy. Uh, so if you're wondering uh, what what the deal with that is, that was his yeah. request. He's like, I just want to be a part okay. of the book. Make me like a cabbages uh, mm. guy from from Avatar. <laughs> uh, and, so we, we got to put him in that way. Uh, but yeah, it just sort of uh, evolved from that uh, sort of high concept. And then by the time, you know, I, I've always been very theme forward with, with my books, with my writing. So, you know, when we really sat down and looked at it, I was like, this, to me, this, this feels like, you know, people coming together, using what they have to uh, get out of a bad situation. And Dalton was just like, yeah, cool. Uh, I kind of, can we punch things and turn them into robots? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so it, it works on a bunch of different levels and I, I, you know, it, it's, it just, it never stops being fun to work on. So it was, yeah. uh, when it came time to like, Hey, we're, we're, we're sort of gearing up toward the next phase of our, uh, our rise as, as comic book creators is like do a Kickstarter and get a book made like this. Mm. Uh, we were like, well, we need to lead with Mechaton because it's it's the most fun, and people will be able to tell that we're having the most fun with it. Absolutely, absolutely, fun yeah. is the middle name of this book. It's it's so absolutely. yeah, amazing, cool. Um, tell us a bit about the the campaign, and you know, uh, mm -hmm. what what rewards, uh, what kind of uh, variant covers and and stuff that you're. Planning Absolutely. This, this campaign. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, the uh, trade paperback. This is the first collected edition of uh, of Megaton. So all the art is complete. Uh, it's 108 pages. It is uh, ready to go to the printer. Essentially, uh, we have uh, the standard issue uh, for people who are new to the story. We have a deluxe issue for people who want all of the little details, uh, page breakdowns, and uh, little extras that we've uh, like unpublished scripts stuff that no one's ever seen before is going to be in there um we have a really nice kind of showy copy of it with uh, hollow foil uh as well as some posters and stickers and uh there's a cover gallery in all the books uh and as an add-on you can if you if you're a major collector you can grab all of the uh copies of uh of the floppies of of Mechaton, which you can see behind me right there Ooh, in the first two shelves nice. uh yeah you can have all those on your shelf if you want um so uh so there's a, there's not necessarily we didn't want to overwhelm people with with a bunch of choices and a bunch of stuff uh but anything that you could want to get into the story uh and anything that you could want as like an extra uh little you know add-on uh, is available as well as some other books that we've done. We we have uh, a horror anthology. We've got uh, some stories from different anthologies that we've been in, so we're selling those books as well. So uh, there's plenty for for people to grab uh, at a lot of uh, yeah at at reasonable prices. I hope um, <laughs> that's something I've been told is that we do is that we we price things really well, um, which nice. which I hope is true. I don't want to like. I, I want people to this to be as accessible as possible for people. Um, that includes you can get a digital copy as uh, all of the physical copies come with digital copies, so you can have it as soon as uh, the campaign is over. You don't have to even wait for shipping. Uh, and the 
for the first uh, 48 hours, there's uh, an early bird campaign. Everything is 25% or everything is 20% off. Wow. That's amazing. Indeed. Awesome. 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 Uh, so tell us about this variant cover that you have. Is it a right, variant so cover or is it the main cover? This is the main cover. This is the, uh, you know, the, the original Mechaton uh, issue one uh, cover. Um, and the the way it originally published was with a different uh, logo or original logo, which I still have a soft spot for in my heart, but it is a little clunky and it and I think this logo is better. Um, so this is this is uh, the you know uh, our way of uh, reintroducing that cover in, in its in all of its glory. Uh, it's also um, this cover is unique to the Kickstarter version. Um, this book is published by Scout. Uh, you can find issue one at uh, at uh, comic shops, or at the very least, order it through comic shops. Uh, and eventually, you will be able to get the trade uh, through comic shops as well. Uh, but you will never be able to get this cover through Scout. So it is this one is totally unique to us. Uh, or the awesome. na- the other cover is also uh, unique to this Kickstarter. It is the deluxe edition. Yeah, uh, this one is so the the first one, uh, like all of our main covers, is, are, was drawn by uh, Fernando Pinto, uh, who is the main series artist. Uh, this is drawn by Jason Murr, who is the artist behind uh, By the Horns, uh, which is one of my favorite uh, uh, independent comic books on the shelves. It is such a good time. I, I cannot is. recommend it enough. And Jason's a great guy. I I really enjoyed working with him and getting this. Uh, the uh, th- this is like a sl- a part of the sort of Mechaton uh, artwork lineup. Uh, yeah. Uh, my my cat is having a ball in the other room. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> no. J- uh, so by the horns was was one of those comics that was coming out right when we were starting to get into comics and and make comic books on our own. Uh, and it inspired us to to go to Scout with Mechaton uh, for uh, to to ask them to publish it, and so we were like, it's always sort of been a part of the DNA, very tangentially uh, of Mechaton. So getting him on on board was a dream come true in a lot of ways. That's amazing, mm-hmm. and it's a beautiful cover as well. You know, yeah, I it, love. It, it. He he always has such striking character designs, and the the composition here is great. <laughs> It, yeah. it feels like, uh, I don't know. To me, it feels like a Gurren Lagann or or, uh, or uh, Evangelion cover or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. It just makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Um, yeah, looking forward to the campaign. Um, I feel awesome. like I should. So, I feel like sorry. I should have said the premise by now, and I don't think I have <laughs> of the book. <laughs> it's. So it's about a glove that turns anything it punches into a mech. <laughs> awesome. We a couple like, of yeah. it and, and they have adventures. <laughs> no, that's uh, you. We, yeah, we can go a bit deeper into the story sure. because that's that that's what the next thing I was about to ask. <laughs> anyway, oh yeah, no, uh, absolutely. Can you tell us a bit about the story arc before spoiling it <laughs> without? Spoiling yeah. So it. the uh, no, I won't. I won't like go deep into spoilers or anything, but. Uh, so the, the characters you see there are Derek, Leah, and Hex in order. Uh, Derek is, is our main character. He is, uh, sort of doing odd jobs and, and not, and, and drifting through life and, and trying to do the right thing, but not really having any clear direction. Uh, one day, a, uh, after, shortly after getting fired, uh, a glove falls out of the sky and almost pulverizes his sister, Leah, uh leah uh being fascinated by it uh uh, puts it on derek to see what it can do or to see you know if if there's anything special behind it uh and when uh, she puts it on him they shortly realize uh, it won't come off um uh before they can kind of deal with that uh a uh random kaiju attack happens which is not normal in this universe uh, a, uh, a giant irradiated cockroach uh, starts destroying downtown, and uh, they accidentally discover that anything they punch with the glove turns into a mech. Uh, they punch a hot dog cart uh, in in sort of a, a act of frustration, and uh, you get the Mechaton Mark One, that iconic uh, hot dog cart robot with the uh, hot dog on its chest. It has a condiment uh, 
gun on its wrist. It is uh, an umbrella shield <laughs> on its back. It's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. And there's a throwdown in the street. Uh, but things get very complicated very quickly. Uh, they have to navigate public perception. They have to navigate uh, cops on their backs. They have to uh, try and avoid, uh, you know, having big throwdowns in in the middle of uh, of populated areas. More yeah. kaiju keep popping up. More characters get involved. Hex is one of my favorite characters in the entire story. They are Leah's partner. Uh, they are. <laughs> Uh, a character that belongs in a different genre, but got smashed into this one anyway. Um, wow! <laughs> they're, they're over being here. They do not. They do not want to be a part of it, but they are along for the ride. Um, and uh, it sort of naturally builds out from from the act from like the consequences of of their initial actions of finding the love and and realizing that it has this much power. Uh, and it builds and builds and builds until uh, a couple of really unexpected things happen. Uh, and we in like the first arc culminates in a fight with a giant goo monster uh, that uh, has some of the best one liners uh, I've ever written. I'm very proud of them uh, and uh, sets up a really uh, interesting cliffhanger for for the next arc. So uh, mm. you're going to come into it, you're going to fall in love with the characters, you're going to get really excited over the action, and by the end, you're just going to want more. That's awesome. That's amazing. No, I I, I totally, totally agree on all of what you said. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely, I, I do want to keep reading after issue five as well. So. We want to keep writing, so please. <laughs> <laughs> no, so well done to the team uh, and yourself as well. So yeah, yeah. great. And it's, yeah, I, I cannot begin to take a, even a fifth of the credit for this. It is, uh, so much of it is is Dalton and me, uh, you know, having fun and messing around, but even more is our art team, uh, Fernando uh, and Megan and, and Nathan as well on letters, uh, just absolutely creating uh, the most fun feel for this book. Um, and shout outs to uh, our designer, Brenda. She is fantastic. Shout out to Scout Comics, who have really championed the book and, and helped it grow. Uh, Andrea Molinari in particular is our editor, and he is fantastic. He's always been a joy to work with. Uh, there's so many people that that make this book work, and uh, yeah, I, I I I am speechless at at how uh, you know privileged I am to to get to make it. Awesome, uh, yeah. You told you told us about the team. So how like tell us a bit about how's the dynamics between the team. So you, what's mm-hmm. the process when you're writing with a partner? I I I love getting into process sometimes, and you know. Oh yeah, uh, uh, process is fun. Um, well, generally, I write the first draft of the script uh, and then send it to Dalton, and he will usually, from the ground up, rewrite it, just write a whole new draft that is tangentially related to what I wrote, uh, and we pass it back and forth like that until we have something that we're both really happy with and just do fine-tuning from there. Uh, once we have something that we're both really happy with, we send it to our editor, Andrea. He tells us what's wrong with it. We fix it. Uh, and then we send it to uh, uh, Fernando via email. Uh, I All my favorite people in comics I've, that I've gotten to work with, I've never met. It's all through email. <laughs> um <laughs> But we, you know, I got to we 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 send it uh, to Nando, and Nando is a machine. He will pump out a twenty-page script in sometimes less than twenty days. Uh, wow. It's it's nuts. Um, yeah, really, really, just a creative powerhouse that guy. Um, once we have you know completed pages, completed inks, we send those to Megan. Uh, she uh colors them and then we get them to uh nathan so it's sort of an assembly line prog- process in that regard uh and then once it's uh, it's all done and complete we uh send it to brenda who packages it together makes it look pretty for us and uh nice. prints it and, and ship it off using uh th- this label printer which is the unofficial uh <laughs> <laughs> that is that is the unofficial uh uh 
seventh or eighth team member of Mechaton uh, <laughs> is this machine. Yep. Yeah, very true, very true. So, uh, what I what I usually like, I I love talk when I talk to a lot of writers. They they tell me that when they started speaking to the artists, they they always get great inputs on how to actually improve those pages. The mm-hmm. you know like, and, and at the end, the story is all that much better. Uh, oh, absolutely. after getting some of the inputs from the artists. So do you like, did you have some of those moments when you're like, hey, this, this, this person makes such a great point about, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, I, there's a lot of trust for sure between, between uh, Nando and, and me and the rest of the team. Uh, and I, I'm always very upfront with any artists that I work with. Like if you, if you see something, you know, a better way to do this page layout or, uh, or something cool that you would like to implement, please let me know. That's, I, I live for that. Um, they, I, I hope it's a sign that, that my, you know, that our, our writing style is, is pretty solid, but we haven't had a lot of moments where they, they come and be like, Hey, I think this would work better. There's occasionally, usually it, it just comes down to like, flow of action stuff how to how to portray a scene you know how how to let a scene play out um sometimes they'll take like the the panel from the page before and stick it on on the page uh or a panel from the page after and stick it at the end of the page if that makes more sense to read um yeah. there's little adjustments like that but uh yeah for, for the most part it's been just pretty smooth uh between you know uh, I, de- I I will say what changes is not necessarily them saying, uh, you know, I think this would be a great improvement on, you know, on, on what you're doing. Um, one of the things that did change actually was uh, the character Hex. Uh, mm. The way I, I originally wrote their, the, like the way I wrote their kind of personality and quirks was a lot different to how they ended up. And that changed because of how uh, Nando was drawing them. Uh, the way uh, Fernando uh, put them on the page, they were a lot more uh, stoic, a lot more no-nonsense, um, very, like, you know, don't mess with me kind of vibes. And yep. I, you know, part of me sort of wanted to resist and be like, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense with what she's saying or with what they're saying. And I realized immediately, like, wait, no, I, I, I'm the one who needs to change. <laughs> this is better. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they became a lot more, um, you know, uh, <laughs> they became a lot more physical in a lot of ways. Like, they, mm. their expression does a lot, but also mm. just the, the their delivery changed quite a bit. Yeah. Even, even yeah. if, like, the substance of what they say didn't change so much, yeah, the delivery uh, uh, definitely did. And, and I think it yeah. plays off of like that dynamic plays off of the other two characters really, really well. That's awesome. I was, uh, this was a while back. Uh, I, I, I was reading this, uh, I was watching this interview uh, from, from the movie, The Other Guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you seen that movie? I have. Yeah, it's been a long yeah. while. Yeah. So uh, in the interview, they ask like, you know, you know how like uh, Mark Wahlberg and, uh, mm-hmm. Will He's always fascinated and fascinated about Will Ferrell's past, and you know, like he just keeps asking those questions about, like, <laughs> how, like how do you have such a beautiful wife, and you know, like things like that. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, he's always, and the way they've set it up is, they, they like they were, they were, they had back and forth initially, mm-hmm. and and this they just kept kept stripping off the dialogue completely, and then at one point they just made. Like so Will Ferrell just doesn't respond to any of those questions because you know, like that that just makes it so much more funny <laughs> and so yeah. But yeah, sometimes as a writer, I think you're always a little bit compelled to put words on a page, um, and that's something that I've had to, you know, learn more and more, uh, especially as I you know. I, as I work with more people and as I read uh, more people that I'm really, really impressed by, um, as a good example, Kaylin Smith, uh, who did Plume and uh, For Goodness Sake and is working on a, a 
what is it the house of lothar which is a uh, uh a web comic on patreon um she is the master of just letting the action speak for itself and and doing character moments with completely silent pages uh as a writer and solely a writer i i don't i i can't you know no one wants to see a comic that i would draw um it would not look good uh you're always you feel sort of pressure like if i don't put words on the page then i you know i'm I'm taking the easy way out or i'm you know not doing i'm not pulling my weight but yeah the, the more you trust you put in the audience and in your artists to you know convey those messages the stronger the comic winds up being um so yeah it's it it has been a journey of like sometimes it's okay to let it go sometimes it's okay to just let a moment up. yeah 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 you know it it uh and and yeah I, I definitely think that uh that those sorts of uh interactions you know improve the book overall and just yeah getting to you know getting to uh 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 let everyone have an input uh you know it doesn't feel like we're you know it's it's you know my story that everyone else is helping me tell it's it's just as much nando's it's just as much nathan and and megan's and dalton's and mm. uh and that's really cool that's really special i think yeah absolutely absolutely it's a team effort at the end of the day right so yeah for sure awesome um yeah i've been meaning to ask this since since we've began chatting so you you mentioned you were you were in the movies you were trying to write films before and uh what uh how how different is the process for you to write a film versus oh wow. um 2017 um how different is the process um it it's it's interesting uh a lot of i, I coming from that background was really nice coming into comics because i already had sort of an eye for editing and an eye, eye for visual storytelling and those two things are extremely important in uh in telling this uh, a comic like a story in a comic um like what you what you show what you choose not to show uh and how they interplay off each other all incredibly important components uh so in in that way it was very similar um learning to kind of abandoned motion and mm. and how to sort of space out a comic so that it didn't feel overcrowded so that it didn't feel like too much was going on that was a bit of a journey and it took me a couple tries to get right um but definitely i'm glad i i came in with that experience because it it uh it's very easy i i do a, i do some editing as well i do some freelance editing and i meet a lot of uh writers who are coming into this for the first time and it's so easy to to slip into you know five pages of talking heads just mm. you know shot reverse shot and i'm like this can be really really gripping in a movie yeah. here it's it's just gonna look terrible <laughs> uh, and so yeah learning or, or already having that sort of sense of like let's make sure that you know, we can have this conversation, but we're also doing something at the same time. You know, mm, um, mm. Uh, uh, I at Dragon Con uh, a year or two ago, I had a uh, really fun conversation with Teeny Howard, uh, and she said one of her favorite moments in uh, the Catwoman uh, 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 series that she was writing uh, actually came from her artist. Because it was just this conversation about like. Uh, they were they were talking about how they were going to steal something it, later in the issue, and the artist was like, "What if they're currently stealing something while they're having this conversation? Like they're passing mm. things back and forth, and sort of like we we see how they operate as they're as they're talking about it." And she was like, "That's brilliant!" And it, yeah. it made for one of the best moments in the in the thing. So yeah, always looking for like how can we how how can we have something new happening on the page while we're doing the talky bits. Uh, yeah, is a, yeah. was a really important lesson to learn and uh, and it definitely helped to come from that visual background. Absolutely, absolutely. Also, I think comics has like much less rules compared to movies, right? Like, you, I mean, they they have their own rules, obviously, but they have... Absolutely, like, yeah. There's, yeah. there's, I think you just have very different, uh, 
limitations and tools at your disposal. Um, yeah. So the biggest one, the biggest one for me to wrap my head around and the biggest one that most people have is the concept of the page itself, the page and panels and how they break down. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, you only have so much physical space on a page you and can. you need to know how to work with that space in order to tell the story effectively. Um, yeah. And, and there's, you know, using the sort of natural break at the end of a page to propel the scene forward rather than just like trying to string of consciousness it. And, yeah. you know, I, f I feel like maybe there's, there's an interesting exercise of every, you know, a 20 page comic where every page, uh, page is a nine panel grid and you yeah. just like, you, you don't pay attention to panels or, or page breaks. Uh, but I also feel like that would be really tedious to to read <laughs> and like <laughs> difficult to get through. Uh, yeah, it's, it's so important to keep people engaged to like to let the shape of the page and the shape of of the story reflect what the story is doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was uh, talking to somebody a while back, and I think uh, they they were an artist uh, on some of the like the Green Lantern books. And mm -hmm. um, and they said that at one point, DC had like, for some runs, they had a mandate that you need, you know, you know, the centerfold uh, needs to be a two-page spread <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and you need to start planning from there. So they they always planned the centerfold first. Yeah. Uh, the You're two, like, okay, what are spread. we... And that's not a bad... <laughs> I, most of my... Most of the comics that we work with start with just a really striking visual and sort of build yeah. out from like, okay, how do we get there? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and, and I, I've always operated in a very like, you know, character oriented way. So my, my instinct is always to just like, well, let's, you know, let's do the most natural thing for the character and see how we end up there. But yeah, you, you do wind up a lot of the time, starting with or or planting that so that you can lead into effectively the big moments that you know are going to like be sort of the the you know the gravity everything revolves around um yeah 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 when when we did frankenstein the unconquered uh that image of the comic crashing into the earth and frankenstein pulling his way out of it was like the yeah. we were like okay well I don't know anything else about this comic, but that's happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so good. <laughs> Amazing. Awesome. Uh, like I said, I like to put people on the spot <laughs> sometimes. So, uh, We've gotten way too comfortable guess. here. Let's go. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, so what are the top five pop culture things that you love that, uh, that say, inspire your work and, you know, um, or you just keep revisiting every every now and then, you know, like top some, some five your... pop culture things. We're not going to narrow can... it down any further. All right, um, I uh, so I I love uh, the uh, Dark Souls series. I'll throw that out there. Um, Bloodborne, Dark Souls, Elden Ring, Sekiro, all of it. Uh, I'm I I that game changed my life. I love the way that they, that that series handles visual storytelling and, uh, and sort of lets the environment speak, you know, the, sort of guide your imagination and, and piece together what happened in your own head. Uh, so that's always been something of an influence, which I know people are screaming at their screen or, or headphones right now that it's Berserk. You're talking about Berserk. I know. I just never read Berserk. So it's Dark Souls to me. Um, uh, I really love, uh, I really love horror movies. Uh, Aliens, mm. one of my favorite films of all time. Oh, um, it is good. So yeah, yeah. The, the, creating that atmosphere, which was actually to, to go back to an earlier, uh, question you had, that was a big, uh, thing to transition out of as well is you not having sound to work with. Um, the sound is, is massive in film. And is, yeah. is, I mean, basically, you know, half the story is told right there. But the yeah. soundscape of the Alien movies is is some of the best in movies to this day. 
It's so yeah. good, and it just builds this this incredibly effective tension. Um, same thing. I'll pivot to uh, Silent Hill Two, and and yeah, <laughs> that game in particular. One of the most incredible stories and like experiences uh, of of uh, yeah, that I, I've ever uh, been able to uh, uh, be a mm. part of. Um, let's see. Uh, I love the novels of Jennifer Egan. Mm, uh, Jennifer she Egan. is a fantastic writer. Uh, still, you know, uh, still very young, still putting out stuff. Um, she just came out with the Candy House uh, a little, uh, like two years ago, something like that, which is. Uh, a sort of anthology uh, uh, short story compilation uh, that kind of deals with the pandemic and kind of deals with technology and how it affects our lives. And it's just incredible uh, from start to finish and on to see. And I, if, if I, if I don't know what to read, if I don't know what like to, uh, to if if I need to get inspired and do something, uh, Scott Pilgrim like yeah, anything Scott Pilgrim related, I will di- I will disappear into for, for like yeah. a couple. <laughs> um, the the Scott Pilgrim graphic novels as well as Seconds that the the mm. it's the it's unrelated but it's another Brian Lee O'Malley uh, graphic novel. Mm. Uh, mm. Some of the most entertaining and weirdly sincere. Uh, pieces of media uh, yeah. and and I, I absolutely adore them and you know every time I go back to, I, I wish I could write a story like this <laughs> yep yep that's very true uh, I think in that regard uh, I don't know if you ever read the series Stray Bullets I haven't no Stray Bullets oh, you, it's really really good you must read it I, I mean, keep that in mind for sure. Yeah, it's both incredibly funny and tragic at the same time, and mm-hmm. like, I I keep wondering how do how do they achieve that effect? Uh, you know, like just just mm-hmm. getting that. It's amazing. It's 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 a beautiful series. It's very well done. Um, it's also about being really awkward at high school. Love that. <laughs> and Love yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. So uh yeah, this is I, I would like it would be my like very big a very high recommendation. Stray bullets and then uh yeah, paper paper girls. Like those are like my go to graphic novels if I not I mean they're technically not graphic novels, they're they're comics, but I, I have volumes. Mm. So <laughs> I, I love collecting volumes. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I don't I don't see much of a, a reason to distinguish the two. Like if you're talking about a flop like a literal floppy then yeah it's it it makes more sense to call it a comic but you know graphic novel is a good umbrella term and it gets people to listen to you without immediately tuning out because you said the word comic <laughs> very true makes it sound a little more little more serious than a, yeah, than a comic a little more prestigious a uh, little more has a little, yeah. little, little juice yeah um, and at the end of the day every comic book is a planned story arc like if you except one shots maybe but uh mm-hmm. but if you if you're planning like a six issue arc or something then you mm-hmm. know like you, it's already a novel that you're writing and then splitting it into six yeah, chapters basically right? so. exactly. just yeah, a little so bit yeah. more episodic usually yeah yeah exactly amazing uh we're coming close to time but uh sure. before we leave uh, i would give you the stage and let you pitch the book to the audience you know like take uh, take 5 minutes and just pitch the campaign, the book, uh, the story. Yeah. Sure thing. The stage is yours. Yeah. yeah. Megaton is a super fun book uh, that anyone can enjoy uh, involving uh, mechs made out of garbage, uh, idiots trying to outpun each other, and the most disgusting uh, 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 kaiju creatures you've ever seen. Uh, if you're afraid of uh, cockroaches, I, I am sorry, but you're going to have to deal with that. Um, it is... It, it's just a, a ton of fun and I, I would sincerely recommend it to anyone. Uh, I think most people can get into it. Uh, if not because of the, you know, sort of fun over the top aesthetic, then because of, of the characters and how much you're going to fall in love with them. Um, 
the campaign itself uh, launches on Monday, February 5th uh, at 10 or at uh, 11 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time in the United States. Uh, so adjust that to wherever you are. But uh, for the first 48 hours, you can get uh, 20% off of the book. It is done. It's the first 108 pages of story, the first completed arc. Uh, so the sooner you get on, uh, the better. And yeah, uh, I would love to see you there. <laughs> the, the, the more people come and, and support it, the more of this stuff we can make. And there's nothing that would make me happier than getting to make Mechaton forever. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome uh and to add to that i've read the books they're beautifully drawn they're amazingly written there's there are so many great heartfelt moments in in the mm -hmm. books in in the in all of the issues uh as well uh the chemistry between the main leads mm -hmm. is just so good i think it's just worth reading only for that so uh it, yeah, it's Scott Pilgrim it's... meets Pacific Rim. If you like any of that, <laughs> that's a great, great pitch line. <laughs> that's a great pitch line. Exactly. Yeah, it reminded. Especially, I think the back designs reminded me a little bit of Robot Jocks for some reason. Sure. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen that movie? It, I don't know if I have Robot Jocks. I don't, I don't think I have. It's one of those obscure. Like I think it's it's a movie that came at a time that. Like the whole genre was just dying. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very low budget movie. Uh, they low budget and, like... and special effects go hand in hand. I feel like. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Robots of low budget. Let's name it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and I think the basic premise of uh, like Pacific Rim was not basic. Yeah, was was taken from that. Mm -hmm. so uh like not 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 kaijus versus robots but robots that was like robots versus robots so instead of sure. i think the concept was instead of fighting wars they would just send out like co countries would send out like giant robots to fight against each other sure uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm down yeah yeah and and they would just fight in a neutral location against each other and then then the outcome would decide whatever it would it would decide so <laughs> that that was the concept uh and it was done with stop motion which was pretty crappy but mm. I, I think it has it still has a certain charm to it and you know like you know when there are movies where you see people have actually like generally given a shit and they have actually tried really hard to make oh yeah uh you can see that come through um for sure yeah i think it, yeah that right that here. sort of passion and love seeps through you know yeah. in, in unexpected ways for sure yeah and and you know why it reminded me of that movie because the 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 main the robot of the lead character in that in that mm. movie is red white uh it has blue because obviously it's american uh, <laughs> but <laughs> sure yeah, but it's kind of like that. It has yeah. similar reds and similar whites. So yeah, <laughs> interesting. Uh, yeah, um, amazing. Good, good having you here. Um, I'm just, I'm just yeah, getting these threads back uh, from our chat. Um, this is also one thing you said about uh, comics not having a, you know, having music, and the uh, the person I interviewed before you, she she has a soundtrack for her comic book. So when you start reading her book, uh, it links to a Spotify playlist. Um, and then you can actually listen to the playlist while, mm -hmm. uh, while reading the comic. Though the downside to That's that fun. is, uh, you know, you can read comic much faster than the playlist oh, yeah. finishes. Singing it <laughs> up is a nightmare. Yeah, absolutely yeah, not. Yeah. <laughs> but you definitely get the vibe. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, good stuff, and yeah, mm -hmm. all the best for your campaign. Uh, please back the campaign; it's it's beautiful, it's it's lovely. I uh, I would love to get this volume, uh, and yeah, just uh, it it'll be. I I would love if 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 you get this funded, you know, pretty quickly, and it graces the uh, the shelves of some lovely people. So, yeah, thank you for for that. Absolutely, um, amazing. Uh, thank you. Awesome.